guys, welcome. My name is Caitlin, and today we are going to be talking about Right Start Math Level B. So as the school year is wrapping up, I have been doing reviews over all the curriculum that we have used this year, and today is the last one. We are gonna talk about our math curriculum, which is Right Start Math Level B. Now, if you are new to my channel, new to my videos, and you have not watched my Right Start Math Level A review, here's a really quick recap for you. Um, I am a former high school math teacher, and when we decided to homeschool our children, um, I knew that I wanted to make sure that I picked a math curriculum that would really give my kids a good understanding of math. Um, I was very particular about what curriculum that we picked, um, because of my background and how much I love math and how important I feel like math is and how I wanted it to be more than just memorizing a handful of things. So I really want my kids to have a strong foundation and a strong number sense. So I did a lot of research, looked at a lot of options and settled on Right Start. And that is what we have been using for two years now. We did level A with my oldest when he was in kindergarten last year. And we just finished level B with him this year for his first grade year. Some of the reasons that I originally picked Right Start Math are that it's a very manipulatives based curriculum. Um, I love that there are a ton of manipul manipulatives that come with the curriculum, which for some people, they get overwhelmed, they don't like that. So obviously not one size fits all, but for us, it was wonderful. I want my kids being hands on with their math. I don't want them just using workbook and nothing else. I want them to have um, a lot of chances to touch and move and, and try different methods and that kind of stuff. I love that it was not workbook based. There is a workbook. It is tiny. <laughs> you don't use it every lesson. Um, you just use it occasionally, but it's not focused on doing a million problems in a workbook. Right Start is not like that. Um, it puts a huge emphasis on mental math, which I think is something that everyone needs to work on. My mental math skills have improved so much just since teaching my own children um, using the Right Start method because so much of that we did not learn when I was a kid. And so to, to not just teach him how to add, but to teach him tricks on how to add quickly in his head, that has been fantastic. And that's one of the reasons I went with Right Start. Um, it just really focuses on how numbers work, why numbers do the things that they do and not just memorize this method and use it to get the correct answer. Um, it's also uses a lot of games. I mentioned that there are not lots of worksheets. Right Start uses games instead to help solidify those facts. And, um, and so instead of doing a worksheet with 20 problems, you may play a game for 10 minutes. And that has worked really well for my kids, myself, um, and I think that's just a much more fun and engaging way to learn than worksheets. So two years in to Right Start Math and we still love it. I have no regrets about picking this curriculum to be our math curriculum. Um, I have seen my son make great gains with his math knowledge. Um, he impresses me all the time and he impresses my husband too with the things that he'll just share with us at the dinner table or, you know, in a conversation outside of homeschool time that show us that he is learning and um, he's able to figure this stuff out. And we've just been really thrilled with it. Math is not his strongest subject. He is not a child that I would say is just naturally math minded. Um, and so he doesn't pick it up super, super fast, but he still loves doing math because it's so fun because Right Start makes it fun. He loves to play the games. He asks every day if we get to play a game. He loves the manipulatives, um, and so he really enjoys it. And even with it not being maybe his most natural subject, um, he still has learned tons and tons. And so we've been really, really happy uh, with our second year and are excited to go into our third year. Now, if you are new to Right Start, uh, maybe you did something else for kindergarten and you're just looking at B for first grade, or some kids don't even do A, they skip that and go straight into B in first grade, I mean in kindergarten. So if you are in that situation and are not familiar, let me show you what kind of um, Right Start consists of. So you get a teacher manual, that's this book right here. 
And then you also get the student workbook that I showed you that's really small, doesn't have a ton of pages, but you do get a student workbook. Now, if you are a Right Start family already, then you really just need these two things to move from level A to level B. You should have everything else that is required. But if you're brand new to Right Start, you will also want to get the manipulatives kit. And I'm gonna link to a video I made where I unboxed mine last year so you can see all the things that come with it. It comes with a ton of stuff, um, things like abacuses, or a abacus, I have multiples now, but it comes with an abacus. The kit does not come with this box, I just use this box to organize mine, but all of these tiles and centimeter cubes and 10 grams and tally sticks and cards and you know your base 10 cards, all this kind of stuff. This all comes in a big kit that you use from level A all the way up in just different ways as your child progresses. So you get the manipulatives kit and then there's also a card games book that you'll wanna get to explain all the games that are played in the curriculum. Um, and then like I said, once you've purchased the manipulatives kit and the card game book, all you'll have to get from year to year is just the teacher guide and the workbook for the next year. So it is an investment up front. Um, that's one thing that people hesitate about is the cost compared to some of the other math curriculums out there. But number one, it's just that first year. We have to get the kit um, that it is kind of pricey. The rest of the years, it's very comparable to other math curriculums because you just have to get these. Um, also for me, I just felt like I feel like the money is worth it. Like, yes, it's a little bit more expensive than just buying a workbook from Amazon, but I feel like that is money well spent because our kids are getting just such a better foundation mathematically than if I just was having him try to do workbook pages. So that's personally, I was okay with that as far as the cost goes. Now you will use almost all the manipulatives in B. Not every single one, there was like, Maybe like three or four we didn't use. In A, there were several that we didn't use, um, but in B, we used almost all of them. Um, some things that are covered in B is place value, which I love the place value cards the Right Start has. Um, this little container is something you could purchase separate from Right Start to keep them organized, and I do recommend it. It doesn't come with the kit, but it is a nice additional purchase. But the little cards do come with the kit. I love this because I feel like a lot of times kids look at numbers, especially once you get to three and four digit numbers, and they maybe can read the number, but they don't have any idea what that number actually means. And I love that with these cards, they actually build a number. So when they are learning 5,341, they will build it like this. And it's really easy for them to see that that's 5,000 and 300 and 40 and one. And when you stack them on top of each other like that, I feel like that makes it make more sense than just these four digits that don't really have any relation to each other and let's just learn what they are and move on. Um, so I have really, really been happy with this particular manipulative. I'm not gonna show you all of them or tell you like what I love about all of them because there's a lot, but that was just one that, this is something we talked about a lot in B. And this is really helpful for my son. So anyway, okay, we um, cover base 10. Um, I know a lot of curriculums and a lot of people use base 10 blocks. Right Start does not come with the blocks. I mean, if you wanna buy some from Amazon, you can, but they use the cards, which have one, 10, 100, and 1,000. And that was great, that was fine. Oh, it's less to store, so I <laughs> think that's great. Um, the bulk of level B, talks about addition is where you're going to learn addition. Um, it's going to be mental math. It's going to be different strategies for addition where you're going to use the abacus. You're going to learn how to, you know, add them the way we like traditionally learned where you're carrying a one, except they don't call it carrying a one. Like they help you understand why you're doing that. Um, there's like breaking the numbers up. There's a lot of mental adding. Um, there's, you know, adding it like just a bunch of different ways. So a lot of B is spent on adding. They, they do two addition, two digit addition. They do four digit addition. There's even a like extension activity where they do like seven digit addition. And my son loved that one. Um, I looked at it and thought, oh, he's gonna be so overwhelmed, but 
it was like they made it in like a puzzle form and he thought it was the grandest thing it was great um there's also we learned about clocks and time we learned about fractions um, money so pennies nickels dimes quarters making change just some basic money stuff there was um, some greater than, less than, equal, not equal, measurement with centimeters and with inches. Um, there's a little bit of subtraction, like it's introduced, you do some subtraction, but it doesn't go nearly as in depth um, as addition. I believe level C is where you really get the subtraction work in. Um, it also touches on multiplication and division, like one or two lessons about each at the very end, just kind of like, Oh, multiplication is adding the same number multiple times. Um, so very, just a very brief introduction. Then there's some geometry, quadrilaterals, right angles, right triangles, geometric solids, symmetry sprinkled in there. And um, yeah, so that's like the main topics that are covered. That is all in this book, like at the beginning. Obviously you can see each of the lessons, but it kind of lets you know what you're gonna learn. And this is also free on the website if you wanna look and see what's covered in B. There's also this game called Corners. So there's lots of games that are played in each level, but Corners is played a ton in B in a bunch of different varieties as you practice your addition. So that's a big part of level B. And it was so fun. That is a game, Corners is a game that like my husband and I would play without even the kids. Like it's not just a game where the teacher or the parent is like, okay, I'm going to play this with you. It's not very fun for me, but you know, it helps you to learn. Like I enjoy playing it with my son and my husband and I would enjoy playing it like a strategy game without the kids. So it's really fun. Um, so, you know, B has been great. Overall, it has been good. It was definitely harder for us than A. Um, A, you know, it was just, my son just breezed through it. Not a big deal. B, was more challenging for him as it should be. Like I'm not, that's not a complaint. I'm just saying, um, you know, he he had parts that were hard for him. But what was great is, and this was um, a learning experience for me as a first time homeschooler. Well, it was our second year, but this is my first child to homeschool. Um, to learn his learning style and be able to expand on that or um, modify things for him. Like for example, he can do two digit addition very easily mentally if he sees it written down. So if I just ask him, what's 24 plus 63? He can't hold those numbers in his head and do the addition. Um, he gets really frustrated and can't, can't figure it out. But if I write whatever I said, 24 plus 63 on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper, he can look at it and, and add that mentally and give me the correct answer every time. Um, so learning those little nuances and figuring out how to adjust to him, I mean, that has nothing to do with the curriculum. That's just part of being a teacher, but um, that has been great this year and we've really grown together. Um, same with the manipulative. Sometimes a lesson would call for maybe the abacus and he would not be doing so great with it. And I, you know, I've got all these manipulatives here, but like, that's fine, let's get out the tiles and let's lay them out in groups and see if that helps. And you know, just switching, switching what material we were working with, that kind of stuff would help him to see it in a different way because every child is different. Um, you know, some things that, uh, you know, another kid might pick up quickly, he struggled with and then vice versa where there were things that I thought, you know, he's not gonna be able to do this very easily and then he just zips right through it. So anyway, it's just cool. And it's great that Right Start teaches multiple different methods. And so if one doesn't work so well for your child, there are other options and so I love that. Um, so, I will flip the camera and show you just an example lesson. If you're familiar with A, they look similar um, as far as the formatting, but if you're not, I'll show you what it looks like inside the teacher book so you can check that out. All right, so here is just a look at one example lesson. This is lesson 54, so a little less than halfway through the book. Um, and all the lessons are always a two-page layout like this. You start out, well, it tells you the objectives and the materials you need, but it gives you a warm-up. So this is just review questions from previous lessons, and then you start into your lesson. So in this particular lesson, you are trading with base 10 cards. And so you scatter out a bunch of these base 10 cards and your child starts grouping them together. And if they have 10 of these, they learn to put those back and instead replace with one of these. And then as they 
work on trading their cards, then they use their place value cards to create the number. And this is kind of, um, you know, it builds a lot. So they learn to trade with the base 10 cards and then they learn later to trade with the abacus and then later they begin just translating that to numbers written on a page when they start adding. So anyway, we go through, you know, um, the activity and then do another one and then have a conclusion. This particular lesson did not have a game or a worksheet or anything like that. And I mean, I've already pretty much shared some pros and cons, um, but just to recap that, you know, obviously the pros of this curriculum are that um, it is so um, manipulatives based. It has an emphasis on mental math. It's very um, just thorough in laying that foundation that um, kids need in order to be successful in math, and it's amazing. There are cons, just like everything. Um, it's very teacher intensive, although I think probably any math at this age is going to be because the kids just need a lot of guidance. Um, but it, it, you know, I have to sit down with him and read the stuff to him and you know, it's not like I'm just handing him a worksheet for him to go work on by himself for 30 minutes, you know, we're dialoguing back and forth. So it does take a lot of my time, um, but I think it's worth it. Um, like I said, it is, you know, more expensive than some of the other options out there. Um, the manipulatives, like it's a lot of pieces um, and sometimes some people get overwhelmed. I've been okay with it. But I know some people are like, oh my goodness, this is so much stuff. <laughs> what do I do with it? Uh, it would not be ideal for you if you were like, you know, traveling full time or something like that. Um, but for us, it's been fantastic. I will say, this is just make a note about Right Start Math Level B, if you're like gonna do it next year. My one complaint about this, myth, about this particular level was just like this one section. There was this assessment at level 76 and it was a mix of things that we had briefly learned at the beginning of the year, but not continued to review. And then some stuff we had learned like literally a day or two before and had not had time to review, like uh, Right Start has review questions at the beginning of every single lesson. So you learn something and then you continue to review it to, to help solidify that. Okay, so um, my son bombed the assessment. Like he did really, really bad and I, felt really terrible. I was like, I mean, am I being a bad teacher? Is, you know, like, is this not the right fit for us? Um, and I just like kind of got in my head for a little bit about it. Um, and then for whatever reason, it, the reviews, like from the, the next several, probably couple of weeks of lessons reviewed that stuff that was on the assessment. And so by the time we'd been doing that for a couple of weeks, he was flying through, I think it was like four digit edition, flying through four digit edition. And I was like, why did they give that assessment when we had just learned four digit edition? They obviously hadn't mastered it yet. Why didn't they wait a couple of weeks until we had been practicing it every single day and it had become so easy? So I don't know. I mean, when I do it again with my next child, I will probably skip that assessment and save it for later. Um, because I know I just didn't feel like it was appropriately placed in the curriculum. So that's just like my one complaint. There's also a couple of lessons that get thrown in there that I'm like, I, mean, I don't know the philosophy behind Right Start and every specific lesson. And there might be like really good reasons, but sometimes they throw one like a using the calculator lesson that I feel like that was not necessary. First graders don't need to be using calculators anyway. Just, I don't know, sometimes it just feels like they're throwing it in there just to try to use as many of the manipulatives as possible so you feel like you get the best bang for your buck. Or maybe it's like a common core thing and they're trying to like make sure it meets those standards and there's like a random standard. I don't know and I'm not gonna like, it's not a huge deal. Sometimes I just skip them if I feel like they have no relevance or we just do them and move on. It's not a big deal, but there are a couple that I'm kind of like, why are we doing this? That seems silly. Anyway. Um, that's just a personal thing. Like we're always going to probably have something that makes no sense to us, but overall amazing curriculum. I highly recommend it. I cannot wait for us to get started on level C next year and to see his growth after another year. I also have my second child is going to be starting kindergarten. So I'll be doing level A again with him or doing level A again, cause I'll be doing it with him next year. And so I'm excited about that too. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. Good luck to you as you pick your curriculum for next year. Bye guys.